Well, let's start with a nice easy one. Yeah. How does it feel to be here at the MCM London Comic Con? Are you enjoying yourself? It's amazing. I didn't think it was going to be so huge. I, I, mean, I was walking through and I went to the pub across the street and uh, I had to call Angelia, the girl that's handling me today, because I got lost and I didn't know where that guy was and it's just a huge mob of, mob of people. It's pretty amazing. And talking about amazing, for people who haven't seen Starcross yeah. yet, can you just set us up with a quick synopsis what, it was, yeah. what it's all about? It's basically an uh, alien ship crashes on Earth, and uh, I am one of seven aliens, um, but the, our whole race is uh, imprisoned in this sector. And then 10 years later, they uh, choose seven of us to get integrated into the Earth school system. So it's like the trials and tribulations of that, and there's a love story, boy, uh, you know, alien boy meets human girl. There's the Romeo and Juliet, so it's a really cool show. I mean, it's a really interesting fusion of sort of classic sort of, you know, genre sci-fi like District 9 with yeah. Romeo and Juliet style yeah. romantics. Yeah. Um, what was it about that combination that really excited you as an actor? I, I loved it, I, and I loved my character. I, originally, I didn't think the character was going to be so prominent in the show, and they kind of, um, you know, they liked the character and they expanded on him, and I just, I loved every second of shooting that show. I and mean, can you talk us through um, your co-stars because it's a great it's a great young cast. Yeah, we have uh, Matt Lanter from 90210 and May T. Garden from Friday Night Lights. They're both great. They're the two leads. Um, my love interest, Natalie Hall, she was the best actress I've ever worked with. She's like went to an acting high school, performing arts high school. I mean, she's really classically trained. And for someone like me, that kind of just goes off of instinct. It was really nice to just work with someone like that and we helped each other out and it was it was an amazing process i mean talking about instinct how did you get a feel for the character kind of i mean he 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 has so many different layers it was almost like impossible to mess it up because like he has all these different different emotions and all these things going on that like no matter what i did i think they were just like yeah yeah drake drake's feeling that drake's feeling this and it's kind of easy it was fun and of course, I mean, we're here at the convention celebrating a lot of great shows, sci-fi, fantasy. What yeah. do you think the genre gives audiences and performers that they don't get maybe from just kind of contemporary drama? Yeah. As, as, a, as an actor, it was fun to play an alien because there's so many things that you can kind of make up on your own because nobody really knows. Like, we had our whole language and the joke on set was like, if you get the language wrong, no one's really going to tell you it's wrong because no one knows what the heck it is. And... I think the world, you know, I can speak for, for my show, the, the world that Meredith and Adele, the creators, created were, was just so intricate. And I think that's what people dig about sci-fi and fantasy is that there's this whole fantasy world that's created that you can kind of just pick from and it's, your imagination just runs wild. It's great. I mean, are you a fan of that type of stuff yourself? I mean, are there any particular shows or films you'd I'm, point yeah, to? Yeah, I mean, I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I loved the Lord of the, Lord of the Rings trilogies, and I've, I love what they did with the first two Hobbits so far, and uh, yeah, that's my thing, yeah. And what else have you got coming up at the moment? Um, I wrote a film called Danny Boy that I'm starring in and producing, and we should be starting that in the fall, so... Look out for Danny Boy. It's going to be good. Can you give us a quick synopsis of that? What's that what yeah, about? Yeah, it's an Irish crime drama. Uh, this kid, Danny, he grows up in this Irish crime family. He's a boxer. And he, um, his family, basically his mom and his brother die on the way to one of his boxing matches. And he never wants to box again. So he gets, you know, swept up into this Irish crime. And there's a love story in there. And then his uncle gets into a huge gambling debt. And he's got to fight in this underground uh, fight ring to get his uncle out of the gambling debt. I mean, what is it about? I mean, in boxing, you know, we see it in you know films like Rocky and, yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And obviously, we've got Creed coming up as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think it is about that as a as a job as a profession that fascinates people so much? It's like it's very barbaric. It's very like gladiator times. You know, it's just one guy, you know, one on one, and it's it's fair. You know, the best man wins. There's no cheating. It's just a mano a mano and people in it, you really have to fight your hardest and I think people relate to that. I mean obviously with Starcrossed, if it had been to continue, where would yeah. you have liked to have seen it go? Gosh, I think they were going to really like delve into the El Gita, mm. they were going to go there and see what that was like. I was really looking forward to see what that was going to look like and what the set was going to look like for that. So that would have been fun to see. I mean, looking back on what you did get to uh, realize on screen, is there a particular episode that you either enjoyed making the most or you're just most proud of? Um, the last episode was pretty amazing, uh, and we were rushing so hard to get it done because there was all these like action scenes and stuff like that, and it, we, we all had to like come together and, and 
and get down and just really, really work hard and not mess up and a lot of long days. And I think the final episode came out amazing. That final scene was pretty epic. I guess, I mean, there is a big question at the moment. I mean, there's a lot of great shows that, you know, seem to be getting a lot of interest in the first season, but yeah. then they're not getting that two, three season run. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, does that make it harder? And do you think there should be some more sort of risk taking, I of guess? Of course, now I feel that way. I mean, I, w I did a show for five years, so that was, we were kind of spoiled that way. But yeah, I mean, it's just tough. There's so much television now. There's so many great shows on TV. So it's really, it's really competitive. You never know why. Like with us, we were on Monday night at eight o'clock, so we were competing against like The Voice and Dancing with the Stars, and we aired during the Olympics. So I mean, we kind of had, we were thrown in with the Sharks for sure. And in terms of when you do get to meet fans at events like this, what do they most often ask you about? What kind of stuff and things you've done in the past? Like, what are they always anxious to chat about? They're actually interested in what I'm doing next, which is really flattering and nice because they want to kind of follow my career, which means a lot to me. It's cool. Have you had any memorable fan encounters? Any funny ones? Any interesting ones? Not yet. I'm always like, I'm always, I always think it's cool when guys come up to me because it's always mostly like the teenage girls coming yeah. to my other show, and I always think it's really cool. Like this, I, I did WonderCon a couple months ago, and this little seven-year-old boy like was with his mom, and he looked up, he's like, "That's Drake," and it was like cool because he was looking at me like I was like, like I used to look at like a baseball player or a basketball player, like so. It's always neat when like guys know who I am. So. I mean, in terms of looking up to people, as an actor, who do you admire? Like, who inspires you? Leo was a big one for me. Uh, Basketball Diaries was one of the movies that made me want to be an actor. Um, Wahlberg, Mark Wahlberg, we come from the same area, so that's kind of a, he's kind of a role model for me. Um, Jack Nicholson was always my dad's favorite. I was brought up on him. There's a lot of great ones, yeah. I mean, of people you've worked with so far, yeah. who's impressed you the most or left the most lasting impression on you? You know, I did a Law & Order just a couple months ago in Mariska Haggerty. I, forgive me if I'm butchering her name, but um, she was amazing. Like, she's been on that show for 15 years. It's basically her show, and she's still so passionate about each scene and each episode. She really wants to get it right, and that was, like, very humbling as an actor and, and very inspirational as well. And I guess my final question, what would be your dream role? I mean, you know, you talked about, like, loving things like Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit yeah. and that. I mean, what kind of, I mean, like, Star Wars, obviously, at the moment. Thing. Yeah, I mean, I was never big on sci-fi, but, I mean, I would, you know, doing Star Cross for a season, I kind of really got into it. That'd be, you know, but uh, the, the role I wrote for myself was kind of my dream role, so hopefully I'll be doing it in the fall. Do you have a message for fans before you leave us? Thank you guys so much for following my career and, and, and showing up today. It means a lot, and... Uh, I hope to have more work for you guys to follow. Thank you. Thanks for the chat. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. Why not subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the link on the screen now?